Hello, everyone. Welcome to our second AMA of this week. Uh, my name is Gary Tu. I'm the co-founder and co-director of Syntax and Hack the World, and we're very excited to have Alex join us today. Um, he'll be with us for an Ask Me Anything. Um, but if you're joining us on YouTube Live, make sure you use that chat feature to um, connect with us and ask us any questions that you have. Um, before then, I would like to introduce Panagin, um, who will tell us a little bit more about what's going on. Hi, yeah, so I'm Panakin. I'm the accounting director here at Synhax. And um, before the AMA starts and uh, Alex gives a little um, information about himself, I'd like to just uh, give a brief summary of who Alex is and what he does. Um, so a rising senior at Duke University, Alex is the typical college student, except for the fact that he's also the co-creator of Jailbreak, uh, which is a video game on the increasingly popular Roblox developer platform that has allowed him to earn well over seven figures in profit and pay off all of his university's tuition fees. Now, uh, Alex finished developing his game when he was only 17 years old and uh, Jailbreak's overnight success has inspired and has set an example for many other teenage aspiring developers to similarly chase their dreams on the Roblox platform. Currently, Jailbreak has just under 4 billion plays with a peak of 560,000 players playing at a single time. Now, aside from working on his games, uh, Alex also accepted a job uh, with the autopilot team at Tesla and is studying computer science along with statistics at Duke University. Um, now, without further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce Alex. Thank you guys so much. Um, yeah, sounds pretty cool when it's all said. <laughs> but yeah, so um, jailbreaks is the thing that really kicked it all off. Um, although I guess I should rewind a little bit. Um, I started programming uh, geez, I guess, I guess about 10 years ago now, when I was uh, just nine years old, got into game development right away, and just always dreamed of having a big game on the platform. Um, so I worked tirelessly and relentlessly <laughs> for many, many years dreaming uh, of that and trying to make that come true. And eventually uh, made it happen first with a game called Vault that I made. Um, that was back in like, 2016 and at the time was a huge success because it was played like a few million times in the first week which seemed crazy and it is crazy but then a year later after four months of work I released the first version of jailbreak and then jailbreak on day one um, at peak had like 70,000 people playing and now um, actually just a few days ago hit four billion plays so it's a little update um, to that statistic um, pretty cool and it's played every day like a few million times, which is ridiculous. Um, and that's really just been the coolest experience in the world and um, has also propelled me in my career. You know, um, it's, it's so cool to know that I've done that once and, and know that it's like, you know, all the hard work that I spent the past 10 years has paid off. And so, you know, anyone that's into entrepreneurship or making games or anything like, um, so many people put so many years into their projects and it's so rewarding when it finally pays off. So I encourage anyone that's working on, you know, whatever project working on during this hackathon or whatever, just stick to it. Um, something's going to click one day and it could be a big success. So yeah, that's me. Nice. Thank you so much. Um, so now we'll move on to the um, AMA portion. So I know a lot of you guys are watching in the uh, YouTube live stream. So feel free to uh, drop your questions there. Um, and if you have already signed the photo release for uh, part, like if you're a participant in our hackathon and have already signed the photo release uh, put in our discord, then you do have the uh, link to our Zoom chat where you can leave um, your questions here and we'll look at them first. Um, but if not, then we'll revert back to our YouTube chat and look at your guys' questions. Um, so yeah, we'll wait a couple seconds and see what you guys have to ask. Yeah, feel free to ask anything about um, games, jailbreak, starting a business, anything tech related. Um, anyone that's you know participating in Hackathon, I'd love to hear what you're working on or any ideas you have or anything. All right, so we do have our first question. Um, so someone asked, what kept you motivated in game design and all the success you've had in your career? 
Yeah. So um, there's a very, yeah, I love telling this story of how, like, when I got started, it was truly just for the fun of it, you know. Um, back when I started making games, I had no idea you could make money or anything. So the motivation was purely just the fun of making and sharing games with my friends and playing them. Um, but it was really hard for a long time because I knew, especially in the later years, that I had the talent to make like some of these hit games. But like actually, um, and this is something that's going to be really relevant to anyone in the hackathon or anyone trying to start businesses, you know, finishing that last 10, 20 percent of the project is the hardest part. And so there would be so many, you know, um, what you might call failed attempts at games. You know, I had probably like hundreds of just unfinished projects on my computer. And um, for the longest time, it was always like, oh, man, like, I wish I could finish one of these. Like, I know I, I could like really have a successful game if I actually finish it. Um, and so it was hard a little bit to keep that motivation there, um, you know, knowing that I just felt like I couldn't finish things because I just kept popping and switching projects. Um, but I finally met uh, my current co current co-founder now, um, Keanu, and that's when it finally like held me accountable and having someone else like a teammate to work on the project really made me like, OK, let's like finish this out. Let's do the last the hardest 10 percent, which ends up being the 90 percent and really just nailed this thing. And as soon as that happened, as soon as I had that, like the motivation just skyrocketed and I just finished um, you know, our first game, which nobody really knows about, and then second game, Volt, and then now Jailbreak, finally. Um, so I think for motivation, like, um, number one, to recap, like, make sure you're doing it for the right reason. Make sure you're, like, really having fun um, and not doing it just for the money. Like, make sure you find some passion uh, in the game. And then number two, if you're having trouble, like, find a teammate. Find someone else that's going to hold you accountable for, like, finishing the project out. And... Um, also just anyone that you can share the experience with as you're developing whatever project. Cool, cool, thank you so much. Yeah, I know that motivation is definitely important in game design. I remember yeah. uh, you guys uh, used to, like I remember when I used to play Jailbreak a lot, yeah. uh, we would stay up till like three or 4 a.m., especially since you're on the East Coast, right? So you'd always be up at late nights grinding on those right. updates. Right, yeah. yeah. So I can yeah, talk a little bit more about that if you want. Yeah. Um, so that's something we do with Jailbreak is we have these, we used to, starting out, we had these weekly updates. Um, and I don't know if you want to talk about how we even met, but you were like one of the the people that I always saw waiting uh, waiting for the update to drop. And like, I would just join, you oh, just yeah, join us and like play the game. Mm -hmm. I was like, I recognize you and like, you seem dope. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's super fun to build that community too of, you know, um, people just waiting for your, uh, whatever you're working on to be released and being so eager for it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so we have a question in the Zoom chat. Um, so Sajiv asked, what languages did you use for the game? Uh, yeah. I think he meant coding language. Yeah. yeah, coding language. So the Roblox platform uses a language called Lua, uh, a little bit lesser known, but it's a great dynamic scripting language. Um, it's super scalable, uh, super great to learn, great first language to learn. Um, so all the game logic is written in Lua. And then for the back end server stuff, which handles um, a bunch of analytics and just like some other game endpoint stuff, I actually wrote in Go, which is a kind of up and coming language. Um, and those are the two primary languages. Yeah. And then there's some Python for some statistics mm -hmm. stuff, but yeah. Nice. Um, let's see. Uh, there is another question, I think. Oh, um, okay. So he also asked, what inspired you to create this game? Yeah. I guess, what was your inspiration? Um, yeah. Jailbreak, man. So there was, uh, so Actually, surprisingly, as a game developer, I actually don't really play many games. Um, I never really grew up playing games, more so just like my friends would and I'd watch them. Um, and I was always way more interested in like trying to figure out how I could do those same things, especially as I got into game development. I was like, how can I do that myself? Um, so one time from our previous game, Volt, we got a message, me and Keanu, my partner, uh, we got a message of someone that like wanted to work with us. And I went and checked out some of his old work. And um, he had this like sort of prison style game. It was called Redwood Prison, if anyone knows on Roblox. 
but it just it wasn't really popular and it was super simple it had like a basic so i guess rewind i'll talk about a little bit about what jailbreak is really quick um it's a multiplayer cops and robbers game um, so when you join the game, you choose to be either a prisoner or a policeman and you, the prisoner's goal is to escape from prison, become a criminal, go into the city, rob banks, jewelry stores, all this stuff, upgrade your car and the police try to, you know, catch you, arrest you and send you back to prison. Um, and so this game that I was playing, um, really simple, had a prison and like a wall and I don't know how you escape. I think there was just open. You just like run out of the prison and anyway you run out of the prison you just like they had a helicopter and i was like well this is so cool and it just had that basic dynamic of teamwork where there was police and um prisoners and i was like well this is actually really fun and i kind of knew that you know since i don't enjoy mini games like playing them for a long period of time and this game for some reason had me coming back like day after day just to play for 10 minutes i was like i i wasn't even thinking about making a big game i was just like i personally want to make a game like i want to add more to this game so i can uh, you know play it myself with my friends um and that was the basics of jailbreak that was like i was like okay i'm like i've exhausted the content in this little demo um so i'm going to take it take the foundations of the idea and just turn it into something totally new and um that was jailbreak nice thanks nice. all right so i think we have a I think we're done with the Zoom questions. So um, our next question would be, uh, what's been your biggest learning experience with game development? Wow. Um, yeah, the biggest learning experience is probably what came, oh, man, there's so many, but probably the, the one that's most important to me is what actually happened like after the game took off. Um, well, man, okay, I'll talk about a few. The most important thing, has been just like everything that comes with having a massive game and like learning how to support the game and learning how to, you know, aggregate the feedback and handle just, you know, millions of people playing your game every day and, you know, deal with the stress of that and also the excitement. <laughs> um, but as far as like actual game development, the biggest lesson, which I'm still learning, and this is like not just game development at all, like this applies everywhere in life, is honestly like time management, you know? Um, when we were first starting out doing those weekly updates, um, like you talked about, we should not have been up till 4 a.m. every morning. Like it should have dropped at, you know, 9 p.m. every night, but um, time management is just so hard and we've slowly gotten better. Like the updates recently, we've been dropping at like a reasonable hour. But um, if you can learn time management, then you don't have to deal, deal with that like stress of like right before you are releasing your update. Um, but it helps everywhere, just planning things out you know, you make sure you have time to do things the right way. You know, you're not just uh, hacking things together, um, which is great for prototyping. But if you want like a, you know, big serious project, like definitely you want to have it all planned out. Oh, Siri. <laughs> um, so time management is probably the biggest one. Um, working with a team is something that I've been like blessed with because my partner has been so, you know, we work great together. But I think for a lot of people, that's definitely something that needs to be learned. And um, as far as working on a big project, the biggest lesson is probably just like learning how to organize your code and organize your project and everything, especially you get into a project that starts to have like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of lines of code. Like um, you need to make sure it's easy to work with and so you can add updates to it for years to come. But that's totally something you just learn as you experiment over the years. So yeah, all great lessons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, I know like in my CS classes at school, our, our uh, CS teachers always get really annoyed with us when we don't organize our code well or like oh, yeah. don't do comments. <laughs> yeah, it must be insanely yeah, no, important it's, it's on your reason. scale, especially. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our next question is, what are you planning to do in the next 10 years? Hmm. Ooh, good question. Yeah. yeah. So definitely not totally planned out. I don't think anyone has a plan out, but um, so I'll be graduating college after one more year. Um, then I'll be free on my own. Um, I really was never planning on, um, you know, having a traditional job ever since jailbreak blew up. Um, but then the opportunity to work with Tesla came up and I was like, okay, if I am ever going to do it, you know, this is a place to do it. So um, I'm on the autopilot team at Tesla this summer. Um, which if anyone has questions about that, feel free to ask as well. Um, but 
working for myself, you know, is just so spoiling and it's so fun, like to be able to have complete control over what you want to do. So um, still not totally sure which path I'll end up taking, but um, ideally both, but games are like my passion and I can totally see like doing games and just working in entrepreneurship for the next 10 years at least. Yeah. Yeah, nice. That's that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Yeah, because I know a lot of people that are doing um, CS majors in college, at least they're looking for a nice corporate job with like big four companies, right? right? Like yeah. Microsoft, I, Amazon, all this. Yeah, I got so lucky, man. <laughs> because <laughs> the fact that I started at such a young age allowed me to be able to achieve that success when I like before I had to start the race of like finding internships and everything. And it just freed me up so yeah. much. Cause right now, if I, you know, if I was like eight years into this and still hadn't had a success, you know, and didn't know if it was going to happen. And then suddenly had to be like, you know, I'd have to give up that dream and have to be like, well, I guess I better start looking for internships and stuff. And it might never happen. You know, the eight years I poured into it. So um, definitely if anyone has worked on something for really long and nothing's struck yet, like keep working at it. Cause I promise, you know, something will come of it and it'll, it'll be really satisfying. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so our next question is, I've always wondered your lifestyle. It can be pretty difficult to multitask when you're studying. How do you balance college life and game development? Yeah. <laughs> Good question. Um, you really don't. <laughs> um, I remember uh, freshman year of college, we were still like, so I released the game like second semester, senior year of high school. And so I was still really learning how to like comprehend and deal with what was happening. Um, and so when I started at Duke that whole year, I was still doing weekly updates. And um, I really just like was absorbed by that and did not really get to do as many things on campus as I wanted to. Um, still met lots of great people, but it was really just a like looking back weird experience because I was just, you know, always um, just like pedal to the metal. We're cranking out these updates every night um, and like trying to figure out how to balance school a bit. So I'd be like, you know, cram all my homework into like one night <laughs> get to like 6 a.m. and then go to work on jailbreak for the rest of the days um, and things like that. But I, I think I did build such a strong uh, and healthy work ethic from high school that I was able to do it fairly easily um, without too much, you know, downfall with my or anything. I, I have had perfect straight A's <laughs> for a uh, long time uh, for the most part. Um, and so it's definitely possible. I think um, even just hearing you read <laughs> that, that intro, not to toot my own horn, but I was like, whoa, like, <laughs> I've done a lot. Like I've, somehow I've managed to do all this stuff. It's definitely harder to manage Tesla and jailbreak than it is to manage school and jailbreak. Um, school, yeah, you know, you get pretty good at figuring out how to handle school over the years, but as soon as you have a full-time job, in addition to your other full-time job, it gets kind of hairy, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I had an answer for that. It's hard. Just uh, if you truly love it, you'll figure it out. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah. Work ethic must be very important, especially for this. I know, like, it yeah. gets yeah i i feel like school yeah school it de it depends on uh how much time it's taking up but yeah work ethic is super yeah. super important yeah, yeah. um and speaking of work ethic um i think yeah. albert avery asks do you ever experience burnout what do you do to mitigate it yeah good question um from a very good friend of ours <laughs> um so yeah burnout i definitely have experienced minor forms of it um but i think working for myself has been a real blessing in that way because anytime i start to experience um any forms of that or any signs of that i can kind of like um choose to work on like some feature or some update that is like really gonna push me um like it'll be something exciting that i truly want to learn about you know, I haven't had a really burnout for like programming in general yet, but you know, I'll have burnout for like some particular aspect of it or something. So I'll just think of some crazy thing, even if it doesn't fit the game and just like work on it. And I still feel productive because it's like for jailbreak and people will enjoy it. Um, but it also gets my mind off of, you know, whatever I might be experiencing. Um, 
doing weekly updates is rough. Um, we did that for about a year and then we went to monthly updates and then competitor popped up and we were like, all right, it's done. let's kill him. Let's go back to, back to weekly. And um, we did that for a while and it's a lot. It's definitely does not leave much time to um, do a whole lot besides work on that. Um, I actually, so this is a transition, but also relates to the question. I um, studied abroad in New Zealand last year, um, which for one was like a great mental refresher because like totally knocked out any form of burnout because I just got to explore and travel and like meet so many awesome people. Um, but also the week, the three weeks leading up to uh, me leaving to go to New Zealand, um, which we slipped, we switched to monthly updates after that, but the three weeks leading up, we're still in weekly updates. And, um, we like first week we did like, we added jet packs to the game. Second week added like jet planes and then third week, like jet skis. And it's just like three back to back, like insane features for the game that I can't believe I <laughs> embarked on because it took so much time. And I just literally locked myself in the room and like, I ate in here, I worked in here like day in and day out, like did not go outside. And it was definitely a lot, but I knew that because I was, you know, about to leave for New Zealand, like I wouldn't have as much time. So I wanted to really knock, knock some up good updates out. Um, but that was a, that was a stressful, hectic three weeks for sure. But yeah, just make sure you always leave time to, uh, you know, for your mental health, because it is so important because you don't, if you start seeing signs of it and you like force yourself to keep going, then you're really going to hurt yourself long term. So just if you can try to uh, spot it early and just uh, take some time off. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> definitely probably true for uh, mental health, especially it's super important to keep that good and yeah, uh, sure. yeah too much working can hurt that. So yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, uh, someone asks, are you planning to make any new games? Ooh. <laughs> oh, you broke up, what was it? Oh, sorry. Uh, he asked, are you planning to make any new games? Ooh, yeah, definitely. Um, there is, as soon as like, as recently as this morning, uh, actually kind of just um, came up with what I think is going to be like a breakthrough game idea that I'm really excited about. Um, for the longest time, like we have wanted to, I'd say after like a year and a half or maybe two years in jailbreak, we were like, okay, like, awesome time to like you know it's probably time to start thinking about a new game um and we started working on a couple things a couple things that just you know we never like we lost interest in um but i feel like now especially we're like both really excited to start something new um and also you know try to um maybe grow the team a little bit um which could involve like someone either taking over some part of jailbreak to work on like bugs or something and um, just free us up to work on this new idea that we have, but uh, we're really excited about it. You know, I don't want to <laughs> reveal really anything about it yet because I think it's pretty, uh, pretty cool. But um, yeah, definitely new games. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, this one I think is a pretty good question. Uh, how do you choose which ideas you follow through on? Yeah, great question. Um, the beauty of uh, having a successful game is that you just have so many great ideas, you know, filling up the Twitter feed all day long. So I'm definitely no shortage of ideas. Um, but um, going back to the interesting lessons thing, an interesting lesson that you need to learn is like how to balance things that people think they want and, you know, proper game design. Because some things that people want, you know, like someone might want, you know, the craziest fastest rocket car like ever and that'd be super cool but it just destroy the game you know um and that's one like there's so many examples like that so many things people want or think they want that really just like you know we know from our game design experience would not um bode well for the game um we have a lot of great ideas and i, I don't know if there's really like there's not really like an algorithmic way we balance them we just whatever feels right um, whatever direction we want to take the game. And we try to balance things like um, we try to focus on delivering things to people that have played the game for a long time. They're like really far in, really progressed in the game. And also um, new players. Um, specifically in the next couple of months, we're going to be working on a lot of things to try to 
help onboarding, like um, adding a tutorial, which I don't know how we don't have yet because it, like, I don't know how people figure out how to play jailbreak, but they do. And like, I'm so amazed. Um, but yeah, making it easier for people to um, figure their game out is definitely on our sites right now. Um, yeah, and then also like balancing the teams, you know, for one month, maybe we'll work on things to, um, make playing the criminal more fun and then you know the game kind of sways that way and everyone loves criminal and then we like add something back like we, we added um spike traps for police they can they can lay down um and that was really cool so like a lot more people started playing as police and it's just like a constant balance of going back and forth um it's really fun actually so yeah you just kind of just observe where the game is and like the direction you want to take it and figure out what kind of updates are going to take it there cool cool um, so our next question is, what's the best part of this whole thing for you? I think that must be <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's hard because it's because it's endless. Um, I, I the coolest thing and the best thing is um, knowing that like all the work and all like my entire childhood of like learning how to do uh, how to make games and program and, like what remains to this day like the most fun thing in the world to me which is like solving problems and programming um it's it's knowing that i get to do that and that that's actually like been able to support me and i can do that you know for the rest of my life full time and not have to worry about you know um finding where the next job is and stuff like that like i truly get to like choose my own path um and it's also so cool to like you know <laughs> have millions of people playing your game that's awesome um but yeah i think the biggest thing is just literally it's given me control complete control over my life as far as like career direction and um making sure that i to work on the coolest things ever every day um for me at least so yeah 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 that's that's really nice yeah. um so uh, another one of our questions is how did you manage to continue to update jailbreak while you were living in New Zealand? Yeah. Oh man, that was hard. I think the hardest part was the fact that, um, the time zone difference with my partner, Keanu, who you all know is, uh, Asimo, if you played jailbreak, um, you know, cause it's like a complete, it's, I don't know, it was like a 16 hour time difference. So it wasn't like, um, you know, or maybe it was 18. I don't know. It wasn't like complete night and day, but it was basically like, we would only, you know, we only had like a few hours maximum per day if we really timed it out right but there was that like inconvenient time luckily we're pretty you know we can work pretty independently um but the other hard part was like you know being in new zealand and wanting to just hang out with people and travel around the country the whole time made it really difficult to like um like there was major fomo anytime i went in my room and just like knew i had to work when everyone else was just like meeting each other and like talking and hanging out and you know traveling like that was definitely a huge FOMO. So that was hard, but, um, you know, that we switched back to monthly updates. So I definitely made it easier, but, um, I think it was really important during that time to like, um, you know, back to the mental health thing, just like, it was a great break. So I kind of did like, um, slack office and right word, but, you know, kind of toned down on the intensity for a few months and it was really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I think that has to do more with, uh, the the work like life balance I guess and especially right. since living in New Zealand you're planning to uh just tone it down a little bit and right. relax and stuff so yeah right. lots of kind of yeah intertwined um ooh one of these is okay yeah where do you see jailbreak in the next couple of years yeah great question we have we did this one thing uh last week where we planned out like um a year's worth of updates <laughs> which was like super cool and we realized um like we've had some pretty like fun ideas in our head but to really plan it out and flesh it out and like um turn the ideas into more than just like a single sentence um was really fun so um where do i see it continuing to be super fun and like we're actually hoping to take it to a totally um kind of man, I shouldn't spoil it because I don't know who's going to watch this, but kind of a really different direction. Um, I don't know how much I want to say, but we really want to make it more of like a simulation and maybe add like some other jobs and things that you can uh, do. But yeah, so many ideas for jailbreak, like endless ideas. Um, so, and how that works with a new game is um, 
it'll be great, you know, because I graduate college this year. And so I'll finally have like all my time in the world to uh, balance between these two games. So it's going to be, yeah, still a lot of jailbreak stuff for the next, for, oh man, as long as it's popular, <laughs> years to come. That's good. Nice. Um, oh, one of these questions is, what did you use to learn Lua? Yeah. Um, oh, good question. So these days, definitely way better. Well, I don't know. I shouldn't say that. I, the way I learned is because um, back in the day, there really was not much content, um, especially like Roblox related content on learning on like creating games. Um, so the way I learned was just by looking at what other like things other people had created and published um, and looking through the code and just like going line by line and like forcing myself to figure out like why it was there and what it did and then slowly um, modifying it whether it's just like changing one line to change the value to like you know change how much money it gave you like you know or whatever how much damage like a sword did anything and then slowly and slowly I just started like um, combining things together like I take someone else someone's code and like merge it with someone else's code to make like this new thing just like copy and paste stuff around and then before I knew it I was able to just like write full lines of code and then full like entire scripts and yeah so it was I think that's like a really good way to learn is well the best way is like having um have something in mind that you want to create um and then just like figure it out you know don't follow like a tutorial because you're not as interested in the end product like find an end product that you're really interested in this applies everyone not just games like if you're making any like if it's hackathon or any product like um the best way to learn is just like think of something you want to make and then just like figure it out each step, like break it down into smaller steps and figure out how to make those individual things. You know, it's like if I was younger or less experienced and I was like, oh my gosh, jailbreak, crazy. Like creating jailbreak seems super daunting, but if you break it down, it's like, okay, first let me learn how to make like a car. Let me learn how to like make it so you can arrest someone, all this stuff. You just put it all together and it looks, you know, the, the final product is uh, bigger than the sum of his, of his parts. Um, so yeah, just figuring out how to break things down and, and then like make those smaller things and put them together and you'll learn how to do anything in no time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, jailbreak is definitely made of a bunch of different parts, but one thing that really stood out to me was the vehicle system. So yeah. like, I, I remember doing your guys' vehicle testing a while ago. Yeah. Um, I think you had it on your group page, but right. I, I just remember that it was very, very like good for, especially for a game in Roblox to have that kind of, of vehicle mechanics i found it really impressive so um i guess my question would be how did you go about doing that entire vehicle development and how yeah. like, all the cars oh, work man. and everything like that yeah that was like one of the key aspects of jailbreak um so like you mentioned the vehicle came before i even had the idea or we had the idea of jailbreak um so at the time nobody on roblox really had suspension for their vehicles you know all the cars on roblox were just like these it was like a flat like you know whatever car and then it just had wheels and if you try to go over a bump or anything it just would not work and that's because roblox traditionally didn't have any like you know the maps were just flat they didn't have any bumps or anything um but they came out with terrain and like um you can just have polygons any shape you want on the on the ground and so i was like okay you know really time for some suspension and um, nobody had really done it before. And so I took a stab at it. And I, I, I tried like for, I don't know, probably like, you know, every few months for like the years leading up, you know, I'd be like, oh, this would be cool to try. And I'd try to do it, but it just would not work. Um, and finally, one day I was like, okay, I'm gonna try again. And it finally just clicked. And I figured out how to make these really nice springs that I could use for suspension and it just all worked together and it worked. And I was like, whoa, like nobody has this. And so that was when I made that um, vehicle testing place and people were trying them out and they're like amazed. And I was like, okay, cool. I've got something on my hands. that's like super proprietary. Like nobody else has this, like, what can we do with it? And um, I don't know what the timeline was, but yeah, we ended up um, using them for jailbreak and, you know, they became, kind of one of the most important parts of jailbreak like jailbreak a lot of it is about that driving experience and driving around and driving to the city and vice versa and that was like not something that was planned when we first made the game but because we had this thing that nobody else had um the players really just took to it and um loved just driving around so yeah but yeah the, as far as like 
creating them. Yeah, basically it just took a lot of attempts over the years and finally I had the knowledge to uh, put it together and it just worked. So whatever secret that is, I don't even know. I think people have like some decent other suspension now, but I'm ready to, I'm ready to try it again and make something even crazier, like not just suspension, but like amazing handling and physics and everything. Yeah. Which could be a hint. Dang it. <laughs> Ooh, a hint. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really cool. Oh, okay. So we're getting some questions about um, competitors. So I guess I'll sort of merge them all and say, mm -hmm. how do you deal with competitors and what's your thought process? I yeah. guess as an entrepreneur, not even just a game developer, but how do yeah. you uh, deal with competitors in that business yeah. mindset? It's, it's totally natural. You know, anything that has, uh, like when Jumbo really took off, um, I guess we kind of were the competitor because there was a game called Prison Life that was um, really popular, like one of the most popular um, games on the platform at the time. And we kind of saw an opportunity to um, make something way better. Um, and so we did that. So like competition is amazing. Like, because you can, you can take something, like anything that someone has, um, there's always someone else that's going to make it better. And um, so we saw an opportunity with that. And so we launched our game. Although I think we might have been working on it before that game was even big. Because I remember um, the game I played, the Redwood Prison game, that was like the first time I'd played a game like that. And then finally, months later, as we were working on it, I was like, oh, there's this prison game on like this number one on the charts like i'm gonna play it out try it out and i'm like whoa this is cool and then i was addicted to that i got a bunch of new ideas um but yeah i don't know totally natural how do you deal with it you just make sure your game's the best and uh you know if they're doing anything right then uh use it as inspiration but just keep going and um if your game is is meant to be then it'll you know you'll you'll make the right features and make sure it's gonna hold strong mm -hmm. yep yep um okay so i guess this has to do with the game um but one of our questions is what do you think about the current balance of jailbreak yeah um definitely something we're continuously looking into um when the game started jailbreak was actually much more about like the prison it, or we thought it was going to be much more about the prison itself like we were planning on um having like a whole game within a game in there where like there's police wandering around like there's meals you get every day and all this stuff and like um pickpocketing police was like a big part of the game because you just be like in the prison and that's how you would escape but pretty quickly we realized what would make jailbreak different was what happens after you escape the prison um and that's like robbing banks and stuff in the city and so we ended up making it eventually like fairly easy to escape the prison itself um and that's when you know, being a criminal kind of became the core of the game like it's the way you make the most money um and we definitely want to try to shift it back a little bit you know we're currently actually brainstorming how we can um do a big update for police to make it way more um rewarding enticing and fun to play as police so we can get that balance back because right now if you go play it's like you know mostly criminals are in the servers and um but it's it's you know you have to maintain a good balance because you know part of the fun is knowing that there's a risk associated with you know going into a bank and being able to be stopped and be arrested and sent back to prison, um, which is a big, you know, part of our gameplay loop. So, you know, we're brainstorming how um, we can make um, playing as police more interesting and things like that. If anyone has ideas, let me know. <laughs> yeah, I think game balancing as a whole is like pretty difficult in general yeah. because um, I know a lot of like major AAA titles, they all have trouble like all the competitive games like you know like csgo overwatch yeah. league of legends they all have troubles balancing things and yeah. i don't think so, anything will ever so be true how right? people are going to play your game mm -hmm. um yeah you know, you something and people just use it in a completely different way so you constantly just have to just make a best guess and um modify it as time goes on yeah mm -hmm. yeah Oh, this is a good question. Um, so what similarities and differences do you see between being self-employed, so like working on jailbreak and traditional job settings, such as working at Tesla? Uh, any big takeaways? Yeah. Oh. Wait, did, I, did I cut out anything? Yeah, or... I think I got the question. Similarities, okay, okay. did I have differences too? Or... Yeah, 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 so it's okay, yeah. 
Yeah, oh, man, similarities. Um, I'm sure there's tons. I'm just trying to think of any big ones. I mean, there's, there's the obvious ones, like, you know, in programming. Um, I think the differences are probably the easiest. Like, um, the biggest difference is the fact that, like, in one, like, in a traditional software engineering job at a large company, you know, you're assigned things to do. And you have freedom in the sense that, like, you can pick up what you want to do at some places. Um, and, you know, you can choose how you want to design, design that feature somewhat. But um, it's nothing like working for yourself especially like on a smaller team, like if it's a startup or if it's, you know, literally what we have, which is just me and Keanu. Um, so yeah, a big difference is that like, we get to choose exactly what we want to work on and really brainstorm and see the big picture of how this thing is going to affect, you know, the whole, um, you know, the whole. Um, relevant is the fact that, you know, when you, when it is a small team, when you for yourself, um, you are like all the roles. And so you see, you know everything and how it ties together much better. Whereas when you're in a, um, at a bigger company, you can kind of get lost in like, um, you know, someone might, someone might have done something that you could use and you don't even know it exists. You know, you don't even know what aspects of like how this is going to be used and stuff like that. So just having the clarity of like the entire business as a whole is something you definitely get by working for yourself. Um, the freedom of like, what hours you want to work <laughs> if you want to work like into the night or um or not at all you know whatever you want to do um similarities both you know you're working on super cool problems like especially at tesla like the coolest problems ever um trying to solve them something that's great at a, at a larger company is the amount of resources you have available um there's so many smart people and so many things that you can just like try out. I remember when I was learning um, how to program and make like, you know, not just like, you know, big back end scalable like web servers and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's expensive to try that out. And it's kind of the joy of working at a big company is you get um, access to like a lot of big tools and infrastructure that you wouldn't have normally. Um, so that's a, that's a benefit. Um, but yeah, so working with people like on a large scale is definitely really cool. Um, but yeah, there's so many more. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> um, oh, okay, so we got, uh, do you ever plan on moving game development past just Roblox or will you always plan to keep it on Roblox? Um, yeah, probably keep it on Roblox. Roblox is such a great platform. Um, definitely could switch, you know, like my, my knowledge and talent is not limited to the platform. Like so much of it is transferable, but especially right now, Roblox is exploding. Like I'm definitely, if I have such a, such headway on the platform and such a big fan base, like no way I'm going to switch. Cause there's so many people that, uh, like, I just know everything about the, the platform and the game and the, like the game development, the uh, internals and everything. So, um, while it's possible, I definitely don't see it happening. I love Roblox. Yeah, a major advantage actually is the community that we already have for Jailbreak. I know we have a really nice community here. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so that, that, that'll definitely be an advantage because everyone already knows like who the developers are and yeah. like, no, which what like quality games they Yeah, game. at some yeah. points, like that is the hardest part. Um, like one of my fears early on was like, okay, say I make this crazy cool product and or game, whatever, but product, like in the sense of whatever you're working on, like, how do I get it to people? Like marketing it and getting those first users mm -hmm. is so hard. And so the fear yeah. was like, what if I make something awesome, but like nobody uses it. And so now having that traction that I have, you know, from our community and our, our um, fan base and everything is going to make launching a new game or any new product so much easier. And like, now we just literally have to make a good product, which in some ways is easier than like trying to, get that um, user base in the first place. Yeah, marketing is a <laughs> is a really huge part of that for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, let's see, do we have any? Oh, okay, so we have another question. Um, how big of an impact has the community had on your experience as a developer? Oh, yeah, huge. Um, yeah, so there's kind of two communities. There's the, um, like the developer community. We all talk to each other, like creators of all the top games and, um, even before that, just like, you know, on Ro Roblox is so great for that because there is that community aspect, even when you're learning how to make games. I don't think any other, you know, development platform has that because um, everyone just kind of grew up together. Um, and then there's the, you know, the player-based community, which is so cool. Like, 
Um, it's so cool to see the communities that form around the game. Um, what, like in particular, we just have, we have like a, a hodgepodge, like our discord server is just like, I, I don't know how many people are in it now, like over a hundred thousand, 200,000. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's nearing 200,000, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, something like that. But it's just like a ton yeah. of people split in and, and like, you know, you can kind of see who's the most active. So we have like um, a channel for like the most devoted players and stuff like that. And so it's super cool to talk to them. Um, but also just seeing like the communities that pop up around like certain YouTubers and things like that is super cool to see and how they all interact. And um, yeah, communities are amazing. Like specifically um, YouTubers are super cool because they like help us um, I think that's the only reason why our game has done so well without a tutorial is because, you know, all these YouTube videos teach people how to play. And so like, um, people just kind of like surround themselves around this, whatever YouTube uh, community they want. And um, they make friends, like actually make friends and all this stuff. Um, so seeing those communities is like super cool, but also super useful for us because it just, it's a great way to reach people. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure YouTube has a lot to do with the, the marketing aspect of your game for huge. sure yeah huge um so we got a question about your work with tesla so um one person asked what do you do with tesla and then other another question was what's the work environment like there yeah oh, that's a funny question um so first what do i do so i work on the autopilot team um i do back-end engineering so working on things that deal with big data and handling um, yeah, just helping helping make the car uh, achieve that those cool features that everyone wants. Um, but the work environment, I, that's a funny question because Tesla has such a um, connotation or whatever of, you know, being super strict. Um, I don't know where that comes from. Because um, from what I can tell, like at least on the autopilot team, like or on the software engineering team, like super chill, like nobody's pressuring anyone to work like late nights or weekends or anything like that, you know, we get in our, it's, I think everyone's like really excited to be there, you know, um, maybe it used to be that way under some type of management, but these days it's, it's awesome. Like it's a great environment. Everyone's super nice, super humble, um, super smart. And um, like some people do work on the weekends, but it's literally just cause they like, like I, some people are randomly like, oh yeah, I was bored this weekend. I did blank. And I was like, that's so cool. Like the, the fact that you can have employees that do that. And that's totally the way I would be too, if I didn't have jailbreak, you know, if I didn't have to, you know, clock off and go work on jailbreak every day. And I say have to, but I, I want to, like, I look forward to that all day long. Um, like if I, if I could make Tesla, like if Tesla was the one thing that I had, like I can totally see myself just like diving into that and doing it all day long and all week, all week and long. Um, but luckily I have jailbreak and I get to do that with jailbreak instead, which is my own project. But yeah, so the work environment, um, I don't know. I hope I hope I hope that clears up the, the uh, I mean I hope that it gets better over time the uh, connotation that Tesla has because it's totally not like that. And I everyone I talk to always brings it up like oh oh man you'd be like work to the bone. I'm like no it's, <laughs> it's actually pretty chill. So yeah. Yeah nice. So speaking of autopilot, I know um, in game one of your developer tools was like incorporating the autopilot yeah. on one of your Teslas yeah. that you had in game. So I right. want to speak a little bit about that. Yeah, that, yeah, that's funny. Um, one of the first things I added to our uh, vehicle system was a way, um, just like, obviously, it's way easier to make autopilot happen in a virtual world where you know where everything is, like you can just query, like you can raycast and stuff, just like know where stuff is. Um, but I just made the car, like, um, you know, find where the lines were and like stay between them. Um, but I would and that's like, it's been I haven't worked on it since like the day the jailbreak was released, but it's like super, I use it a lot. Like as a developer, it makes me think like, hmm, this could probably be really useful and <laughs> change the game for a lot of people. Um, so yeah, we might think about, you know, revisiting that. I think it'd be cool if I worked on it more to make it actually like you just click a spot on the map and have it like, you know, take the right turns. Cause right now it just follows the lanes. But if I can make it like take the right turns and like, you know, enter an exit on the highway and stuff like that, um, definitely something that could be like productized and sold in the game for sure. Yeah, you could have like a, a taxi service, I guess. Right. <laughs> That'd be kind of fun. Um all right. So I think this is a pretty good question. Um, any tips to transcend your identity as an entrepreneur? Games are one way. Any other ways from your point of view? Hmm. Wow. 
transcend. I guess that means like how I can like make, I don't know, I, does that mean like beyond games maybe? Like how can I do more? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, um, definitely something I think about. Um, and I'm really glad that, you know, going back to when I said I was never really planning on working for anyone, I'm really glad that I have now had that work experience working at such a cool place. Because I know I'm not like now 10 years in the future, I don't have to look back and say like, man, I don't know like what what the other side of life outside of game development is. Um, and now I have experienced that. So I think that has been big for, um, you know, whatever transcending my <laughs> development career um, and being able to see that and like know, um, you know, if I choose to do it or not, like what I'm missing or what I'm gaining from doing that. Um, and then as far as beyond games, I, it's working for yourself is also great for that because I'm uh, there's so many things that you like games are like the coolest pieces of like like coolest products ever because they incorporate everything like um, people say they're like the hardest piece of software to write because it takes like every single piece of um, programming knowledge or whatever you need like you need big data like at scale you need um, small features like UI you need to worry about like millions of people like attacking the game in all different places um so like i you know one time when i wanted to um expand my knowledge outside of game development like i just i did i built a whole like analytics back end to help us track things in jailbreak which could have been for any project but it ended up being like i ended up being able to apply it for jailbreak you know so even though it's not like it didn't have to be game related and it wasn't um but i still found a way to like tie it into jailbreak um so you know even though i'm even though it's like I'm a game developer, like it goes so much beyond that. Like a game developer kind of encompasses everything, especially when you're working for yourself because you can touch whatever you want and expand and learn everything. So um, yeah, it's super fun to be able to have that breadth of knowledge and be a jack of all trades as far as like software engineering and technology goes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know like, um, yeah, so dang, that, that's pretty cool. Um, uh okay so what do you think was your favorite feature to work on and implement in jailbreak oh man it's whatever i'm like working on for the next update is always the uh the most fun thing um but what was something really i mean the cars early on the cars were super cool um what's a recent um the planes were really fun to make which i was talking about like before i went to new zealand working on the, the jet plane and everything that was super fun because that was the we didn't have planes in the game yet so working on the physics for those um I love anything that involves like physics and any, any math I can get my hand on. Like, I love doing that. Anything that's like simulation-y, like real world, stuff like that. Um, we're soon going to be revamping, or actually before I say that, I'll, I'll hold that off <laughs> for another thing. But um, we're working on right now revamping um, radios in the game. So for the longest time, um, you know, you go in your car and you can like turn on the radio and like type, put in a, um, a song that you want. But now we're adding like playlists and custom playlists and like um, the features. So now, now you don't have to listen to a song on a repeat forever. You can like play a song and then have it transition into like a new song. And I think it'll be really nice for the game atmosphere. Um, so that's really fun to work on right now. Um, but yeah, everything's fun. I, I try to only work on things that are like super fun. <laughs> oh, all right, yeah. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, I remember in the in the early days of Jailbreak, I think we had a I think you guys had a Trello system. And um, mm. one of the ideas uh, was like making a playlist for the radio. I still. Think yeah. That. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we had a we had a public Trello that people could vote on. And we just like took the coolest ideas we saw from Twitter and um, put them in there and have people vote. But uh, we still look at that. We might have that might be where we got yeah. that idea. But yeah, it's definitely been a long requested feature. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, ooh, someone asked, what's it like to be part of the team that is revolutionizing the driving and car worlds with autopilot systems? Yeah, it's so cool. It's like, especially right now, as Tesla is just blowing up and taking over the industry, um, it feels really good. And to know that I'm making, you know, even a, what you know, whatever impact I'm making, even if it's small, is like super rewarding. And to know that, you know, the things that I'm working on are going to exist beyond like, you know, the time that I'm there um, is super cool. So yeah, definitely a lot of satisfaction. Probably one of the coolest parts is, is you know, knowing that I'm part of such a cool um, revolutionary product. Yeah.
Yeah, I think Tesla definitely is the future. Over here in Washington, we have a lot of people that use Teslas. Um, we're all about that green yeah. energy. We're yeah, yeah, but it's it's really cool. Um, okay. Uh, so Josh asked, you mentioned that you know jailbreak with your eyes closed. Tesla is much bigger than this. How did you feel when you started working with for Tesla? Uh, were you startled that you would be handling a lot more code? Uh, did you prepare for it or did you just dive in? Yeah, that is actually a really good question. Um, Tesla's onboarding process was super interesting. Like, I think most companies have, um, you know, at big companies like Microsoft and Google, you know, my friends are working at, they tell me about how, like, you know, their internship starts, they're assigned a team with, like, a bunch of other interns, and they work together on, like, some project, yeah, like a, whatever, few month long project, and they, like, deliver at the end. But Tesla, like I'm the only intern on my team and I just got thrown into um, working like day one. They were like day one, they, were, they said, all right, let's ship a feature. And so they found like a, you know, easiest feature and they were just like, all right, figure it out. Um, and they're obviously like so willing to help. So like it was daunting at first and I was like so overwhelmed with the amount of code that I just did not know. Um, but it, I, I learned that that was like totally a natural thing and you just like pick it up, I, you know, cause at the beginning I was like, Oh my gosh, like how am I ever going to comprehend just like all these different subsystems and all this stuff. But um, you just figure it out and you learn, like um, you learn to, um, you know, if I know jailbreak blind, like where I know, I know all the code and how it all works together, you know, at Tesla, I know like whatever I'm working on, I know like, you know, the area around it, you know, maybe everything's foggy, but like this area is very clear after you work on it for a while. And then you just keep working on things in that area and then like maybe jump to a new area and it's daunting again, but you figure it out. And um, it's super fun, actually. It's super fun to like figure out how things work. Um, but it definitely is nice to, you know, know how everything works. So jailbreak is kind of <laughs> really fun to work on in that way. But yeah. Yeah, I think the onboarding process at all these big companies is always super daunting for the, for the newcomers, for sure. I know some of my friends who uh, like, are introduced into their like Microsoft internships and Amazon right. and all that. Yeah. Um, it's all it's all very difficult for newcomers just because of how big the scale is and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Christopher asked, how did you get involved with Tesla in the first place? Do you own one? If you do, do you tinker with it? If you don't own one, would you get one? Yeah, I do own one. Um, it's kind of like a, a running joke on, on like among fans of like <laughs> Roblox developers that like every top Roblox developer has a Tesla. Um, yeah, so I've been a long time fan of the company and um, the way I got involved was super interesting, you know, cause like I said, I was never planning on working for anyone, but um, Elon tweeted one day and they love to tell the story whenever I, you know, all the, the people, like the person that hired me, um, but they love to tell the story about how Elon tweeted one day, he was like, hey, we're hiring, um, like go to this link. Like he sent it out to everyone and, um, I was like, oh, cool. Like, I'll check it out. So I clicked on the link and then it was just like an application, like, um, like name, email, like what's something cool you've done. And like, I'm like, obviously jailbreak, like is the perfect thing for this. Um, so I filled it out in like a minute, you know, didn't submit, I, Tesla doesn't even have my resume. I never submitted a resume to Tesla. <laughs> um, and I got a call like the next day and, um, the guy was like super excited to talk to me because they apparently received like tens of thousands of these applications. I don't know how they went through them, but they were like, Elon overwhelmed us with this thing, but like we knew we had to go through them. And they found a few people that were um, super good candidates. And so then they just like rushed me through the interview process, you know, did some technical interviews. And then uh, within like a week or two of that tweet, I was at the company. Dang, yeah, that's really cool. I know Elon has his uh, unorthodox ways at Tesla. So that must be fun. <laughs> oh man, it's, um, it's so cool. <laughs> to have like a celebrity as your CEO, but not just like a celebrity, like a really intelligent, smart engineer celebrity. Like it's so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, how, how big is the team that you work with at Tesla? Yeah. Um, the teams are, they're pretty small. They're, um, you know, around eight people each, I think. Um, not too many people working on autopilot itself, probably like between a hundred and 200 people. Um, so it's super cool to like, it, you know, it's, it's the size where you can kind of reach out to anyone you want and get to know them. Um, and you just do that naturally because you need to work on things that they, you know, manage. Um, yeah. Yeah, nice. Um, 
Oh, I think, uh, so we're almost out of time. So we have time for one more question. Um, this is pretty good too. Uh, what are the risks, rewards, and trade-offs of a lifestyle business versus a high potential business like Tesla? Yeah. Um, interesting. I don't know. I don't know if I'd call jailbreak like a lifestyle business. Um, but yeah, I think luckily with jailbreak, it's kind of like beyond the point where or like game development for me is kind of beyond the point where it could ever be a risk. Like, I don't feel like I'm, I don't feel like I'd really be taking a risk if I were to choose one or the other. Cause in a way, like jailbreak is huge, <laughs> like 4 billion plays by hundreds of millions of people um, around the world and like so many things on the road, on the map. Um, definitely something you need to think about. I, I, you know, I'm in a really unique position, thankfully, and luckily, and I'm super blessed to be in that position. But, um, you know, for a lot of people, you do have to think about that risk between like, you know, job security, where, you know, you'll be at a big company and making a, a steady salary. Whereas um, entrepreneurship, startups, and game development in particular, super hard to know where your money is going to be coming from you know every month because you it's totally at the mercy of the players and like the environment of what other games exist at the time and even trends you know one month your game might be popular and then suddenly it's like you know the fad's kind of dying out um and so jailbreak's been you know jailbreak was the number one game on the roblox platform for like two straight years and um because it was just like such a like everyone loved that genre and then suddenly like some other games started popping up in the same genre. And then now I think it's kind of fading out. I think new genres are gonna come in, but I think Jailbreak and just the way that we um, drive it in the future is still gonna be able to maintain that um, prominence on the platform. Um, yeah, definitely super, it, it's super individual. You need to think about like, you know, if you do wanna work for a large company, like, yeah, you have that safety. And you can also work for a large company and on the side, you know, work on your startup, which I think a lot of people do. Um, and then when you feel more confident about it, you can work on that, like take it full time and do what you want. But yeah, super tricky to decide. I don't know. Great, great. Yeah, that, there definitely, I guess there's a lot of aspects to it. Um, yeah. So that is all the time we have for now. Uh, thank you so much, Alex, for coming on and doing this for us. It really means a lot. And yeah. uh, I guess I'll switch over to Gary, our co-founder, to close us out. Yeah, thank you so much, Alex. Um, everyone on stream and on the Zoom call had so much fun listening to everything that you had to share. Um, and we really appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it was, it was uh, great to be here. And I hope everyone that's, you know, working on any projects at the Hackathon right now is doing some cool things. I hope they, uh, I'm sure these guys will tell me any cool projects that come out of it. But um, good luck with that and everything in the future. Yeah. And for those joining us on stream, um, if you're interested in more similar events like these, make sure to check out our social media. I'm at Syntax on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and also Syntax team on Twitter. Um, check us, yeah, check our social media for upcoming events. Um, the next one we'll be having is actually a technology panel um, with, some, with some college students who are currently majoring in computer science and other tech degrees. Um, at, and that'll be at 4 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So join us then um, on YouTube um, and see you guys later. Thank you. Thank you.